in terms of the system architecture um, once again uh, and possibly here as, as much as anywhere in uh, technology um, you've got to remember that complexity is the enemy of security uh, we want to keep it simple we want to um, ensure that we can understand uh, what is going on, even if it's going on very quickly, that we, we understand the, uh, the flow of information, um, we understand uh, where uh, the vulnerabilities could be, uh, where we need to place protections, um, you know, those those types of things uh, are determined by by the architecture at a at a very basic level and and certainly um, ensuring simplicity um, ensuring that we we do understand uh, gets us much better positioned to ensure the security of the system they ensure that uh, there isn't uh, situations going on that we don't understand that that produces risks that we don't understand that we cannot foresee and cannot protect against because we just don't see them don't uh, don't know to put extra protections in in place uh, anyway uh, now we've uh, you know looked at the the most basic level uh, Von Neumann architecture is, is pretty much what everybody uses, uh, regardless of the security advantages of, of the Harvard architecture. Um, but uh, still at a, a fairly conceptual level, but there are um, uh, different types of, of architectures that... Um, uh, again, have security implications to them and, and uh, you know, identify at least to yourself um, what kind of architecture that you are working on. And here I'm talking about uh, starting out with, uh, say, open and closed systems. Now, open systems uh, doesn't mean that it is open, that it doesn't have any protections. Uh, what it, uh, although an awful lot of people think that open systems are unsafe in security terms, whereas other people uh, will say that open systems are in fact more secure. Um, the uh, the open systems concept, though, really means we can use. You know, this is this is not quite the same as open source, but here we are talking about. Um, the ability to use standard protocols um, that we uh, we are using uh, standard interfaces, and therefore, um, when uh, a a portion, a unit, a component of our system overall um, becomes obsolete. Uh, needs to be replaced for one reason or another if a, a vendor uh, goes bankrupt whatever it may be um, that we uh, we can identify that and we can easily replace it because there is a standard interface uh, to the rest of the system uh, or to the next component in the chain whatever it may be um, and so you know that's open system now closed systems are uh where a a vendor uh you know says that you know we make the best whatever it is and uh you know you have to use our systems uh at least to a certain extent um we will make the interfaces we will make the uh uh protocols and uh you know that's that's our thing. Uh, don't you worry your little head about it. Uh, we'll handle everything. That's closed systems. You know, you are um, kind of at the at the mercy of the vendor. Now, if the vendor is is good at security, if if the vendor is good at the type of security that you need, um, then good. You know that that takes it off your hands. Um, that reduces your workload. If 
you can trust the vendor. Um, but it also means that you are locked into that vendor. And if that vendor has a problem, uh, decides not to support that particular system, goes out of you know, business, whatever it may be, uh, the vendor is, uh, you know, well, you're not only at the mercy of the vendor, but now you're at the mercy of circumstances and, and you cannot uh, easily replace uh, that vendor's uh, system or component uh, and therefore we're in a situation where, you know, possibly in trouble. Um, we certainly have difficulty in regard to what the, uh, what the vendor may be doing um, in that regard and, and not doing, uh, not supporting uh, what we need to have supported. Um, dedicated systems, where we have uh, systems dedicated to a specific task, um, the, uh, the components of the system are uh, uh, primed and, and, you know, tuned to a particular type of function. Um, and again, you know, we, we may be limited in terms of our ability there. Uh, probably uh, dedicated systems are uh, less commonly uh, open systems, more commonly closed. Uh, we are tied in to the vendors because this is a special uh, device. Um, uh, then uh, you will... Hmm, it is unlikely that you will encounter single level systems uh, these days. Um, but it's not impossible. If you have a, uh, again, a, a particularly a dedicated system and, and a specialized system, um, it may be uh, doing a, a particular task that works at a particular security level that, you know, only deals with sensitive information, only deals with open information. So, uh, you know, a single level system where uh, we, we don't have to do, you know, the information classification because it's, you know, the system itself and the function it performs is uh, one particular security level and we don't have to do it more commonly of course and you know pretty much everything that you are going to encounter these days is a multi-level system where on the same computer we are uh, dealing with information of different sensitivities different values uh, different requirements uh, different classifications and so again we have to do the classification we have to uh, uh, manage the access control appropriately to the, the sensitivity of the information that we are dealing with. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, still, still dealing at a fairly abstract uh, level of, of architecture, uh, but looking at some different uh, different requirements, uh, different ways of looking at, at our architecture, even in, in broad overall terms.